analysis of uh, publicly available data. Uh, this study was conducted uh, in the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. And of course, uh, there was also a collaboration with the Broad Institute and many other institutions. Um, but the, the goal of the study was uh, to see, well, there were many goals of the studies, but one of, one of the goals of the studies was to see how well you can, we can use publicly available data to identify uh, novel association using different, different approaches or different computational approaches or novel, or novel type of analysis. Um, so yeah, and then this project is uh, called the 70K for T2D, and this is a nice logo made by Elias, our uh, colleague in Barcelona. So this, for now, this paper is uh, in BioArchive, and 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 this is these are the authors involved in this paper, and I am adding these authors below because this have uh, during the review process we have done more analysis. And, and, and yes, and I, I apologize because I think that I put Jonathan Martin name wrong. He's Jonathan Martin, but, but yeah, they contributed to the uh, second round of the revision process. Yeah, so, so the, main, the, the, the main idea behind this project was uh, how we could use generative imputation to reanalyze the data. So uh, when, we, when we started the study, uh, there were studies of very huge number of cases of controls, and the larger one, the larger one was 21,000 cases and 55,000 controls. But these studies uh, were imputed with a low dense or a reference panel had map, so only three million variants could be analyzed with this study. So we thought that we had less number of cases and controls, but maybe if we analyze it with a more dense uh, uh, then uh, reference panel, we could identify more variants. So, in case there's someone that is not very familiar with uh, genotype imputation, I'm gonna make a very short conceptual summary. So, the, the idea of genotype imputation is that you have a uh, genotyping array that is covering some of the variants, like here we have this region that's covering three variants. But then you have a reference of haplotypes, which could be, for example, 1,000 genomes, that is covering all the possible variants in that region. So the idea is that uh, you, can, you can face these haplotypes and align them with the reference uh, haplotypes, like it's shown in this cartoon B. And then by aligning that, you are able to fill in the gaps in the positions that, uh, that have, they have not actually genotyped, but they can be uh, statistically inferred. So you end up from covering, for example, in this region, three variants to cover all these variants in the region. Um, and then, of course, the genotype imputation depends on many things. It depends on the quality of your genotyping array, but it depends also in the quality and density of the reference panel. So the, the first reference panel that existed was the HubMap uh, reference panel, but then there was a thousand genomes that included more than 15, uh, 40 million variants, and the, then there was phase 3,000 genomes, and then there was UK10K, which was uh, around 3,000, uh, uh, almost 4,000 individuals uh, from UK, and 42 million variants, and then there has been a lot, a lot of reference panels. And now, nowadays, there's the Hubble Dave Reference Consortium that aggregates most of the existing reference panels. And the idea is that the more the, the higher the number of subjects you have for a given population, the you are more able to 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 genotype or to impute properly uh, low frequency variants. So we thought that uh, reanalyzing some data with a better reference panel could improve our resolution of our tools. And just as an example here uh, of what you can see when you perform genotype imputation. So this is, for example, one region of a, lo a low frequency variant, which is uh, in, located in the CCND2 intron. And you can impute with several reference panel, but if you impute with 1000 genomes phase three, which has a small number of Europeans, we don't see any signal here. But if you impute it with a uh, UK10K, we do see a signal, which is a signal that has extensively been replicated. And this variant has a frequency around 2%. So, so this is showing the advantage of uh, using several reference panels. 
So for that, uh, we used the pipeline developed uh, in the Barcelona Supercomputing Center that is basically making it easy, the phasing, imputation, and quality filtering, and then the association testing. And this was developed by uh, Marta Guindo and Freeman Sanchez, who is uh, one of Marta Guindos here. <laughs> and, and well, it, 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 the highlight is that it includes uh, the X chromosome, it makes everything easier uh, to get to, I mean, to do the analysis so that you can focus on the interpretation rather uh, than focus on the coding and, and on the scripts and checking if the scripts crash or not. Um, yes, so yes, as I said, the idea is to uh, go from a, from a GWAS that is not very dense because it's not covering many variants to a GWAS that is uh, more dense. And, and for that, in that case, in, in our case, when the project started, uh, when the project started, uh, uh, we used uh, the UK10K reference panel and the thousand genomes reference panel, and we, you, we combined uh, both results. So this is a very complicated uh, flowchart of the analysis. But just very briefly, on top on top of the flowchart, these are the different cohorts that were available for the analysis. So each of these cohorts were uh, QC'd separately, and then they were phased separately and imputed separately. So this resulted in uh, 15 million variants that could be imputed, and then and then for the so the variants that are in HAMAP, we could combine them with uh, with data from uh, from Diagram Consortium, which was available, but, but for the ones that were not uh, in HAMA, we just used the, the, the meta-analysis from our data sets. And these are, these are the novel findings that we identified. And, and yeah, the highlight of the discoveries is this association in X chromosome and, the association, and this low-frequency variant in the, the chromosome 6. So one of, one of the advantage of using these two reference panels is that that combining the use of two reference panel, we were able to impute uh, more variants mm -hmm. and with better quality. And for example, we can see here mm -hmm. that this is a fraction of rare variants. So if you combine the imputation from 1000 genomes and from UK10K, we are able to impute many more variants uh, uh, with good quality. And also another highlight is that these reference panels contain also indels, which are small insertion deletions, not just SNPs. And in total, combining the two reference panel, we were able to impute uh, a total of 1.3 million mm -hmm. variants. Um, so the, the, the overall results here show that, um, that the associations were in regions and reach for, uh, for pathway related with uh, insulin uh, insulin uh, signaling, and well, we can see here a plot uh, of the several, several pathways like response to insulin and etc. Uh, this was interesting because it was kind of a confirmation that that we were going in the right direction. And then, as any possible GWAS, here's the uh, Manhattan plot and the Q2 plot. And as you can see, uh, this Manhattan plot contains not only the 22 chromosomes, but also the S chromosome, and we performed the analysis uh, in females and males separately and also all together. So, so these are the variants that we identified. And yeah, so as I just, uh, I'll go in a little bit more in detail. And also just to highlight that uh, one of the few low frequency variants that have been previously published was very well captured in, in this study. Um, yeah, this, this slide is just showing the, the forest plots for all this association. It's just to, sh just to have a quick overview that more or less uh, the variants are not driven only by one, by one cohort, but by several of them. And, and here's a, some, some short summary. So there's one variant in the region, uh, libla like one, and this region has been associated with uh, with adiposity and waste to hip ratio. So maybe this variant might maybe uh, driving um, type diabetes through obesity. Then there's also the ABO, ABO locus 
which has been previously associated with uh, several um, metabolic risk factors. And there's Neurogy. Neurogy is a gene that uh, is essential for cell development uh, in pancreas. CAMKK2. Um, I mean, I don't need to go through all of them, but this is like a summary of uh, hypothesis of uh, what could be driving uh, this association. Um, this is a detail of the low frequency variant. I'm just showing that because, in general, uh, low frequency variants are very hard. How many doing one time? So, uh, yeah, so in general, low frequency variants are hard to, to, to identify and you need like very large sample size. So, this variant uh, had low frequency, the frequency was around like just below 5%. Um, but then the odds ratio was uh, kind of uh, not very high, but but much higher than than the many of the new common variants that are being identified with larger meta analysis. And yeah, just to finish, I want to highlight the analysis that we did in the X chromosome. Um, it's important to note that the many G was. Uh, ignore or forget about the X chromosome. And one of the examples is here in type 2 diabetes, the last, um, the last time that the X chromosome was analyzed was in 2010. So this is seven years ago. And the, all the other meta-analyses did not include the X chromosome. So, so we thought it would be nice to include the X chromosome. And especially given the fact that there was a variant that was associated uh, with type 2 diabetes in the X chromosome using a, a fairly small number of samples. So, so we indeed found an association uh, in the X chromosome, and the, this association was only found in males, but, but the O's ratio was very high, so it, the O's ratio in the discovery cohort was around three, uh, around three, so three folds. This is a very huge O's ratio for, for type diabetes, as, as I mentioned before. And, the association was so strong and the variant was so low frequency and it was in the exomosome so that we thought that we really needed to show replication of that because um, it was, well, I would say the results were too exciting. <laughs> and then, so we managed to gather replication from several cohorts and, and, then, uh, and then we included also Partners Biobank, which is a, which is a biobank resource here at the, uh, at the MGH and also UK Biobank, which is uh, a new data set that you probably all know about it, but it's like a half million of individuals that have been uh, genotyped and, and for which there's electronic health medical records. So in totally the replication cohort uh, showed a p-value of uh, 0.001 um, with an odds ratio of 1.5, so it was a bit uh, lower but overall, the meta-analysis was uh, genome-wide significant, and the meta odds ratio was around two. So this was good news because we managed to replicate this association. Um, also, uh, this, this, this association was mostly done with uh, imputed data. There was a small cohort for which uh, there was uh, in, in Danish for which we were able to do a follow-up. And what we could see here is that the 10 year follow-up showed an increased uh, hazard ratio for type 2 diabetes in these individuals. And the interesting thing is that these individuals were actually uh, genotyped for this variant. So this variant was not imputed, so they were genotyped. Um, so this was also confirming the association uh, with type 2 diabetes. So we attempted to functionally characterize this variant because this variant was located in an intergenic region. So for that, we analyzed the uh, roadmap epigenomics data, which is uh, epigenomics data from 111 uh, reference epigenomes. And what we saw is, is summarized here. So this is the locus zoom, uh, which shows the the location of this of this uh, variant and what this is that this variant is located in this region which i'm going to zoom now and this region is located in a 
in, 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 a, in an area where there are uh, marks for epigenetic marks for active enhancer. And these ep epigenetic marks map together, uh, correlate with expression of this gene here, which is angiotensin receptor 2. So angiotensin receptor 2 has, has been related with uh, hypertension, but also with type 2 diabetes. So we believe that the most likely candidate gene or effector gene could be angiotensin receptor 2. So be, because we thought, because we saw that this was in a, an active enhancer, we tried to see if this variant was affecting uh, the binding of any possible regulatory protein. And we did that with, uh, with EMSA, with allelic specific binding uh, assays. And what we see here, although it's not, uh, although it's, uh, uh, well, it's not very clear in this in this image, but we see that um, in the presence of the common allele, which is the C allele, there's one band here. So there's one some protein, nuclear protein that is binding that is lost when instead of the, the common allele, there's the T allele, which is the risk allele. So that is telling us that the risk allele uh, is preventing binding of uh, some regulatory protein that we still haven't identified, but uh, but but this has been seen in in, in in several in several models, including uh, fetal myoblast, in, in the human uh, fetal myoblast. So besides that, uh, we performed luciferase assays, and what we saw is that uh, individuals, uh, sorry, that the the C allele is associated with uh, less luciferase activity compared to the T allele. So the hypothesis here is that probably the C allele. Uh, is uh, the, so the T allele is preventing the binding of some repressor. So when there's the T allele, there's some regulatory protein that's probably repressing the expression, and and then that's why we see more expression. And just to final, just to finalize all the data, the data from the two papers is available uh, for query in the type two diabetes genetic portal. So any post, any variant and association results can be shown here. And this is just an example of one of the variants in igf 2 pp 2 and it can be seen from all the projects. So this variant is present in the Sigma study and also in the 70K, 42D, GWAS, and also in the other data sets. Um, and yeah, the summary, uh, I don't need to summarize everything because I think I went point by point. Uh, just. I just think it's important that this analysis, which is done in just in type diabetes, underscores the value of reanalyzing publicly available data and underscores how important it is to share data so that other other researchers can do um, more can can get more insights into these thesis. And and also, uh, I want to thank all the group uh, previous group at the Barcelona Sport Computing Center, including. Uh, uh, David Turens, Juna Sanchez, Marta Guindo, and especially to Silvia, who is, is one here, uh, who lead all the project and did like most of the work and presented for the second uh, paper. And just to acknowledge all the authors, there's a lot of authors, a lot of laboratories that contributed to this analysis. And 